What is Calvinism? Let me tell you the truth and the whole truth as they are deceiving a lot of people. And it is not right. First and most of all these people believe in one man's doctrines of John Calvin and not God's word the Bible. And they're teaching lordship and not grace of God of heaven. Calvinism is a theological belief about how God saves people, that is how he keeps them out of hell and gets them into heaven. Calvinists uniquely believe that God has sovereignly has selected certain people to be saved. But not all the truth, it's all a big fat lie they tell people to deceive you. They say it's not God's will for all people to be saved in Calvinistic theology. That God only selected some people and others he did not like God picks favoritism. They tell you that God has selected a minority to be saved. The rest, of course by default, it's nothing but a lie. They tell you God has selected certain people not to be saved. You can't have one without the other, so they say? Now I ask you did God of heaven lie when he said in 2 Peter? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And remember God said, in Romans chapter 3 verse 4. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. And God's warning in. Revelation chapter 22 verse 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Now, you might be surprised about this, but that's what Calvinism is all about. Anyone who says otherwise doesn't understand Calvinism at all. More specifically Calvinists can be delineated by their five cardinal doctrines. That happened to be easily remembered by the acronym TULIP. The letter T stands for, Total Depravity. The letter U, stands for Unconditional Election. The letter L, stands for Limited Atonement. The letter I, stands for Irresistible Grace. And the letter P, stands for Perseverance of the Saints. Calvinists, of course, use TULIP that easy way to remember their five cardinal doctrines themselves. But this is nowhere to be found in the Bible in scriptures. Now let's examine them one by one. As they're all really interrelated. Now really if you believe one lie. You might as well believe all the other lies as well. Because one lie covers the other lies as they're completely dependent upon each other. Now in fact, if you knock out one of the lies that would knock out the rest of the lies as well. Now let's start with the letter T, stands for total depravity. Now, you don't have to read much of the Bible to find out that people are sinful. And they fall short of the glory of God. They're rebels without a cause and they're in big trouble because of that rebellion against God. We think it's safe to say from the Bible some people are depraved. Now you can even go so far as to say they were totally depraved. Calvinists have a unique spin and judgmental approach on this. Human beings are so totally depraved, that given the opportunity, they would never, ever repent and turn to Jesus. Now of course, this is partially true. Now because Jesus did say that no one can come to the Father, no one can come to him, unless the Father draws them. Now apart from the Holy Spirit drawing us, none of us would ever come to Christ. But this leaves out the thousands of other scriptures that indicate that we do have a free will, and that under the influence of the Holy Spirit and the conviction of the Holy Spirit, free moral agents can exercise that will and take that little tiny step of saying, I am sorry I sinned, and I am going to make my best effort to change. Of course, the Holy Spirit goes right to work when you do that. This is not salvation by human works. This is salvation by grace through faith. The Holy Spirit goes right to work in someone who has, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, begun to take steps of trying to submit. The Holy Spirit helps that person submit. Now there are lots more we could say a lot more about this. Then the letter U, stands for unconditional election. They said God has elected certain people from before the foundation of the world. 
and out of everyone he has created. The Calvinists say God of heaven selected some people to be saved, and then by default, selected some people not to be saved. This is what they say it was an unconditional election. They say God saw nothing in them, like faith in Jesus, that would cause him to select them. To be saved. It was unconditional, just by, God's good pleasure, some Calvinists say. Well, the whole phrase, unconditional election, is an oxymoron, and just plain out stupid and ignorant would you not agree with this? And on the road to nowhere. All elections are conditional. You elect political candidates because they meet your conditions and your views. In fact, all choices are conditional. If it's not a conditional choice, then it's not a choice at all. It's just random chance. If Calvinists would think about this, they'd have to agree that people are saved not by grace, but they're saved by chance. A flip of the coin. Heads you win. And tails you lose. There's nothing that God saw in anybody that caused him to select them. He just selected them. It's random. It's not an election at all. We ought to pray, oh, thank you for the luck that has saved me. But it's not luck at all. That's unconditional election. Of course scripture does talk about the fact that we've been elected, but again. Calvinists have added the word unconditional before that. They've redefined what an election is and created an election that really isn't an election whatsoever. We believe in a conditional election. God foresaw those who would, under his gracious influence, repent and make an attempt to believe in Jesus Christ. And then God went to work for them. The letter L, stands for limited atonement. Now get this, on how they believe. Now if God has only pre-selected a minority of people to be saved, then why would Jesus die for everyone? That's a great question. According to the Calvinist theology, Jesus didn't die for everyone. They say Jesus Christ only died for those whom God pre-selected. And according to them John chapter 3 verse 16 is a lie. Can you believe these false prophets from hell telling people this lie? Even though the Bible says that God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. Even though John wrote that Jesus is the propitiation or substitute for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for everyone of the whole world. That's not what Calvinists believe. And trying their best to deceive you and lead you to hell they quote from their own Bible twisting God's words. You need to wake up out of your slumber you're being deceived by these people. It's amazing the lengths they go to to undo those scriptures that we have just showed you, and many people support it. This is the word of God of heaven. And it's all a lies they're telling you. To deceive you they are false prophets led by Satan but inside they are raging wolves in sheep's clothing. Then irresistible grace, that's the letter I in Tula. Those whom God has pre-selected at his chosen time. He zaps them with a grace that's irresistible and that. What causes people to be born again, against their wills. Now they want you to believe it is true, but it is not true as they have you believe, it is a false doctriners by these evil people twisting God's word to make it say something it never did say. Do you not remember how Satan deceived Eve in the garden? Even though the Bible is a book, practically from cover to cover, about people who resist God, and God lamenting it, and God calling everyone to repentance, and God telling us to go preach the gospel to everyone in the whole world, calling everyone to repent. But now you're not going to repent. Unless God has pre-selected you and zapped you with some irresistible grace, according to Calvinists. Just another lie, God of heaven never forces anyone to do nothing you have a free will either you accept him or you do not, this how God designed each one of us. Finally, the perseverance of the saints. Obviously if God has pre-selected some people to be saved, those people will be saved. When they come to faith in Christ and are born again, they'll never fall away. They'll never turn the other way. Even though the Bible is full of examples and warnings of that very thing happening. We're saved by grace through faith and we have to continue to believing to be saved. And that is why there are so many admonitions to continue in the faith in the New Testament. But this is not a possibility in Calvinistic theology. Where do Calvinists come up with these ideas? By isolating scriptures from the rest of the Bible. That's how all wrong and bad theology is concocted. You have to harmonize your doctrine with the other 30,000 verses in the Bible. 
We could easily take the Calvinistic proof text and harmonize them with the rest of the Bible. And it fits our theology quite well. Calvinists cannot harmonize their proof text, rather their interpretation of their proof text, with the rest of the Bible. They love Romans chapter 9 verses 1 to 5 of course taking that out of its context, in the Bible and making it say what they want it to say to deceive you it is only one verse they use. Saying this is how God chooses someone and doesn't choose the other. Whereas Paul was not talking about people being individually saved. He was arguing about the fact that if God wants to, he can sovereignly choose to save Gentiles by faith, the same way he's been saving Jews for all that time. He can save Gentiles if he so desires, and he does so desire. That's up to God. Praise the Lord. Not by works. Not because of what the Gentiles did, but because of God's love and his grace. As you can see how this is all wrong, and out of context what the Bible says. We strongly disagree with the Calvinists, now God in heaven says we're to love all people so we say it in love of Christ Jesus. And we don't like their doctrine. As the doctrines of devils of a cult as they're twisting scriptures to say what they want it to say. They will reap what they sow. God of heaven will see to it. 